In this driveway in Burlington, Ontario, they are drilling for heat. Enough heat for this 8,000 square foot home entirely out of the ground in the front yard. Owner Linda Nakarata was amazed to learn she could heat the entire house, the pool, all the hot water, heat the driveway to melt snow in the winter, and air condition the whole place in the summer, all with energy from the ground, with a fraction of the greenhouse gas emissions. And I got really excited and I said to my husband, oh my gosh, it's going to be so clean. It's going to be so great. He goes, okay, how much is it going to cost me? And that's really what it came down to. So the initial outlying cost was expensive. I mean, it's not cheap. But at the same time, when they sat down and did the number crunching, which my husband always does, they found that between five and seven years, we'd pay back. It might seem hard to believe, but no matter how cold it gets above the ground, there is energy in the earth that can be used to heat houses. It's a clean and renewable alternative to fossil fuels, but right now it's only being used in less than 1% of Canadian homes. So why isn't everybody trying to tap into this energy in the ground? It's a mystery to those who have long understood the potential offered by the physics of heat. It sounds complicated, but the principle is simple. Heat travels from something warm to something colder. So when you put a pipe into the ground and fill it with a liquid that is colder than the earth, the liquid will absorb heat from the ground. A heat pump brings the liquid to the surface and into a heat exchanger in the home. The heat is extracted and a fan blows it throughout the house. The liquid is pumped back into the ground to start the entire process all over again. In the summer, the system is reversed for home cooling. Still confused? Most people are at first. Again, it's because they're uneducated about it. If they, if they knew what they could do, if they had their own piece of property, and they knew that there's enough energy on that piece of property to heat their house for a quarter of the cost they're now heating it for the rest of their lives, then I'm sure they would go to the geothermal. But because they don't know about it, they, they don't select it. So how are you making it for this one, Trevor? Is she going to be ready on time? We have to get that Glenn Kay has tomorrow. been making ground source oh, yeah, heat pumps be, uh, since the early 80s. Wires, yeah. Suddenly, his factory in Petticodiac, New Brunswick, is scrambling to keep up with demand. When we started selling them, we were trying to sell these things based on a, an energy payback and a saving for your customer. But I think in the years to come, the fact that uh, we're going to produce only one quarter the amount of greenhouse gas emissions compared to uh, straight electric or an oil system or so on and so forth is going to be an even more significant factor uh, than saving money. So what's the downside? The initial upfront cost is higher than conventional oil or gas furnaces and it will always need electricity to run the heat pump. But it's one quarter of the electricity of a normal heating system and it means homeowners are no longer vulnerable to increasing oil and gas prices you're realizing a savings after the five to seven years and you have, I guess, free heat. I think the buildings are, are, are basically coming that way too. Steve Cunning Whether had a hard time selling ground source heat systems back in the 80s when oil was cheap, but not anymore. What we see is just uh, phenomenal. I mean, our phone doesn't stop, our website is getting hit just over and over again. We, we can't, at this time of year, I can't believe the interest and, and, and it's not only interest, it's, it's, it's not tire kickers. These are people that have crunched numbers and said, hey, you know, geothermal, this is, you know, this is, this is an answer. These pipes here are, uh, they'll be eventually connected. There are several ways to install a system, but in cramped city spaces, it's usually done with holes drilled into the ground. I'm sorry, there'll be nine holes here. Uh, the, the, this one here is 250 feet. Down. Down. Down the holes, they install pipes, which will be filled with a liquid, usually water mixed with ethanol. Those pipes are connected to a heat exchanger inside the home. Basically, this is the geothermal heat pump system here. The house doesn't need a furnace anymore. It's all inside this metal box. During the energy crisis of the 70s, Ottawa hired scientists to start developing geothermal energy in Canada. But when oil prices fell again in the 80s, the project was cancelled. Alan Jessup was one of those scientists, long retired, 
Jessup has been contacted by Ottawa again, this time asking him what he learned back then. Now, people want to know what we did in the 70s and 80s. Where's all the information? So I, writing a report in the second half of it this year, I did the first half last year, to say what we did, what we found, where all the reports are or what they contain, uh, with an enormous bibliography, of course, and uh, it will be a general description of what we found out in those 10 years. What they found was that in addition to the ground source heat available in every Canadian backyard, there were some places in Canada that could offer something else. Water so hot it could turn turbines and generate electricity. Iceland gets almost all of its power that way by tapping into underground volcanic activity. There is some of that in Canada at Meagre Mountain near Squamish, British Columbia. A private company has drilled deep into the rock to tap into thermal water for a commercial power plant. And there are other places in Canada with subterranean hot water that could be used this way. As the energy fears of the 70s become a reality today, Alan Jessup says it's time to explore geothermal again. In the 70s, everybody was very concerned about us running out of oil, which wasn't happening then. But now, of course, we're either at or close to the peak production rate of oil, and we're not discovering new, new resources of oil. So we are now at the point where popular perception of the 70s thought we were. Back in Petakodiak, Glenn Kay worries that Canada is losing time in the fight against climate change. If you read anything about green, you know, our, our greenhouse gas emissions and the time we have to try to do anything to prevent global warming from happening, we've only got a window of about eight years. So if it takes our governments more than eight years to get their act you know, into gear and uh, start to promote all technologies, not only ours, we're going to be in serious trouble. We're going to miss the window of opportunity and then no matter what we do, uh, we're going to be chasing the eight ball, basically. So that must frustrate you. It does frustrate me, actually. It frustrates anybody that's in this business or anybody that's in the energy business. But as maritime geothermal races to keep up with the demand, it's clear that word is spreading about the best kept secret in renewable energy. Kelly Crow, CBC News, Petacodiac, New Brunswick.